I used to be a marketing consultant for Fortune 500 companies. You would be amazed by how marketing is done on the top. So we start off with a very key question. What is marketing? Marketing in essence is very straightforward. Marketing is about selling more stuff to more people for more money, more often, more efficiently. As long as you are doing those things, you are doing marketing right. So ultimately, the success of any marketer is dollars and cents. If you're driving top line growth, you're good. If you're not driving top line growth, you're bad. But how do you do it? How do we actually drive top line growth? We say that marketing is a mix between knowledge and vision. You can be a little bit more knowledge based or you can be a little bit more vision based. Take Steve Jobs. He was a marketing gunslinger. He never ordered any market research and trusted his gut and his vision to drive decisions. So he was driven more by the vision side of things rather than the knowledge side of things. On the other end of the spectrum, you have companies like Procter & Gamble with brands like Head & Shoulders, Gillette, or Tide. Well, they tend to be much more knowledge driven versus vision. Their marketing is cold, calculated, and to the point. It's based on key differences in the product and not necessarily a heavy emotional component on top. Although there are always emotions involved. So what's a good mix? What's the right mix of knowledge and vision? Well, this is where things get really interesting on that crossroad. Knowledge is basically a lot of data. It's a lot of information. It's a lot of data you analyze, you run segmentation models on, you can get certain insights from. In the 21st century, you have to be comfortable with the knowledge part, with data. If you want to be a marketeer anywhere in the world, if you don't like data, if you don't like numbers, then maybe marketing is not right for you. The Mad Men style, whiskey drinking, cigar smoking era of marketing is long gone and it's never coming back. So let's talk a little bit about what that data might look like and what it can do for you. Well, usually when you talk to these Fortune 500 companies, and I'm sure for a lot of you guys out there, you have a lot of data and a lot of information about how people are using your products, how users are utilizing your products on a day-to-day -day basis, what the use cases are, and what patterns emerge. If user X is using product Y, then they're more likely to use product Z as well. You can run some sort of correlation analysis on top of it and try to boost conversion, upsell, or cross-sell. Now, the key here is having usage data is good, but it's not enough. It's never enough. Then you start adding some demographics, which is probably the next part that you're gonna be looking into. So how old are they, where they work, what kind of family they have, what kind of income they have, geographic location, etc. When you add the demographics, you get a little bit of a better picture of who your target group is and what your target audience might be. But again, demographics are not going to be enough. If you want to make money and you gear your communications on a functional level, it will work. If you want to make a shit ton of money, then you better hit on an emotional level. And to do that, demographics and knowing how your consumers use your products is simply not going to cut it. So what kind of data do you need? What do you need to know about somebody to be able to hit an emotional chord? Well, number one, you have to have demographics. That's understandable. But you have to add certain lifestyle elements to it. What are their hobbies? What are their passions? Where do they go on vacation? What kind of bars do they hang out at? Do they meet their friends or their family on weekends? Do they have Sunday lunch? Are they religious? All of these types of questions are relevant to their decision-making process when it comes to buying and consumption. And again, because marketing is about making money, we want to make sure that they're making a decision to give us their money and not somebody 
house. Show me the money! Apart from the lifestyle, you always have to add consumption. What are they buying? What are they paying for? I really don't like the market share metric. I always prefer share of wallets. I don't want to know out of all of my competitors what percentage I'm getting. I want to know out of all of the money in the wallet of my target group what they are spending it on. Are they buying Coca-Cola? Are they going to Ikea? Are they going to the movies? What kind of clothes are they buying? Descartes said, Cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore I am. I believe in, I shop, therefore I am. If you tell me every single brand that you have purchased in the last three months, that will give me a lot of information about who you are as a human being. Brands are a part of our identity. Brands are a form of self-expression. Back in the old days, when you wanted to get to know someone, we used to do what's called an iPod swap. I would give you my iPod, you would give me your iPod, I would listen to the music that you like, and you would listen to mine. That will give me a lot of information about who you are. This is in that similar line. Last but not least, it's crucial to understand your target group's media consumption. Are they a Joe Rogan fan? Are they CNN or Fox News? All of this information is relevant. I want to know every single media outlet that they're getting their information from. Not only because those media outlets are ultimately touch points for me to communicate, but it gives me a lot of information about who they are. If they're using a lot more information media, they also tend to be influential in society. They're opinion leaders. People listen to them. If they're using more entertainment media or escape media, then they tend to be more followers. All of this combined then gives us a picture of who you are. What are your tension points? How can we solve those tension points and ultimately make money? So at this point, this is still knowledge. This is not vision yet. You can technically scrape this data online. You can buy it data straight up. There's a lot of different data sources that you can use. But once you get that data, what do you do with it? This is where the difference between a good marketer and a great marketer comes into play. What is the model, the methodology you use to analyze all those different data points? Well, the one that I like to use and the one that I used to use back in the old days when I was a consultant was called Adler's Personality Dimension Map. So Alfred Adler was a student of Freud. He theorized that human beings' personalities, their behaviors, can be mapped out using these eight criteria. Enjoyment, conviviality, belonging, security, control, recognition, power, and vitality. We really like this model because it gives us a very quick and easy visual representation of every single human being on Earth. So how does it work? Imagine your name is John. We have all of John's data, including lifestyle, consumption, I shop, therefore I am, and of course, their media habits. If I take all that data I have from John and run it through an algorithm, I can place John on the map as a dot. So this is John on the map. And if I can get John and Sue and Evan and Angela and all of the Avengers and Batman and every human being in the United States on this map, then we can get a bunch of dots on the map. Once we get all of those dots on the map, it's very clear and easy to understand that the people that are closer to each other tend to be more similar and the people that are further away tend to be drastically different. What this means is we can create clusters. So as you can see, these are the clusters. Each cluster represents a certain segment, a certain group of people. And once again, because the basis is not demographic, it's not only about how old you are, what gender you identify with, or how much money you make. It's about who you are as a human being, your motivations to exist, and of course, your behaviors. This is considered a behavioral segmentation model. 
Now once you get all these segments you see on the map, the map is pretty cool. The segments are archetypical. We can talk about them for days or weeks. This type of behavioral segmentation is crucial for answering the question, why? If conventional metrics answers the question, what? What are they doing? What are they buying? What are they using my product for? This type of model allows us to understand why. Why are they doing what they're doing? And understanding the why is the key to unlocking exponential growth. So just to give you a quick example, let's take Chardonnay girls. Chardonnay girls are typically 18 to 25 in terms of age range. They tend to live in densely populated cities, so they have more of a cosmopolitan lifestyle. We call them Chardonnay girls because they're super social. They love to be out and about, shopping, bars, clubs, social events, they are there. They use social media extensively. They're credited for starting the selfie revolution. So Chardonnay girls have a very strong sense of romance that's deeply embedded into their DNA. The one is a concept that is tailor-made for this segment. The flip side of this coin is that other segments perceive Chardonnay girls as shallow. This is not the case. They're actually quite intelligent. They're actually quite smart and deep. This creates what we call a tension point for them. They have a chip on their shoulder. They want to prove to society that they deserve to exist in the same intellectual space as everybody else. And they do. But they also want to look awesome. This creates a dichotomy within their psyche, which allows us to sell and sell more. Let's take peacocks as a second example. Now, Chardonnay girls tend to skew female, about 70-30 female. Peacocks tend to skew male, 70-30 male. We call them peacocks because they want to show off. Just like the animal, they want to spread their tail and grab attention. They want to be the center of attention. They are the alpha male. One of the key insights with this segment is the hierarchical approach they have in their inner circle. Just like wolves, they tend to see the world in hierarchies. This also creates an interesting relationship with their father figure. They respect their fathers as their fathers are the alpha in their family, but at the same time, they want to challenge that authority. Alternatives are on the other side of the map. Alternatives are 50-50 male-female. They wear grungy clothes, jeans, t-shirts, Converse sneakers, that type of stuff. They really don't care about what they look like. But just like the peacocks, they also have a motivation to show off. But behaviorally, they go about it in a very different way. If peacocks want to show off using their clothes, their cars, and how much they spend at a bar, alternatives want to show off by using their brain. Alternatives will probe and provocate and pull you into discussions and debates about religion, politics, gender roles, any topic that will allow them to flex their intellectual muscles. And they're going to show off using that. Getting into their inner circle of friends is a long and tedious process. They will test you to make sure that you make the cut. But once you are friends with them, you are friends for life. Now, Chardonnay girls tend to date peacocks, but ultimately marry alternatives. An alternative would say peacocks are shallow muscle heads, and peacocks would say that alternatives are dirty hippies. Neither of these are true, but as we say in marketing, perception is reality. Now, these three segments will technically fall under the same demographic umbrella. They will also most likely have the same usage pattern in terms of your user database. The only reason why we are able to differentiate them is that we know more about who they are versus them just being a consumer, somebody who buys stuff from us. A little shout out to my fellow marketers out there. Make sure that you go deeper. Don't ask the what, ask the why. And when you're asking the why, make sure you understand that the person in front of you is a human with a full life. They have fears and motivations and dreams, as we all do. And unless you have data and a data analytics model 
that allows you to move from knowledge to vision, you can never be a great marketer. Once again, guys, if you like what you're seeing here, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys next week.